All right, so now you are in your course and you've already walk through and design that idea of your gauge activity. Now what you're going to do is once you're in Canvas, you're going to come up to this red plus module. You're going to create a new module and I want you to just do, you're going to call it introduction module. Because this is going to be a module that we work through over the next month and then we'll create another module at the end of the semester. All right, so in this introduction module, you have to decide what type of piece you want to add to the course or into the module. So over in this right hand side, you have this plus button. You have different options that you can add. So you can add an assignment. And if you want to add an assignment, that would be one that you'd want your students to submit something or it's just just going to give you the information. So I would not recommend an assignment for this because it's not going to have that peer interaction. Quiz, that would not give students information to each other as well. So that would be just more for you and that your student. A file would be if you're uploading something. So again, not that interactive piece. You can do a page and I'm going to show you some ways that you can use a page here in a little bit. Or you could use a discussion. And that would be kind of how we've done some of our interactions or probably an external URL. There's not very many internal ex or internal tools within the Canvas, Iowa State's Canvas, I should say, um, that are really interactive. So my guess for this one, you would either use page, discussion, or external URL. So for example, in page, I'm gonna go to page first, and every single one of these is gonna have the same rich content editor in it. So I'm gonna go to page, I'm going to click new page. So to get the keyboard um, emojis up on a Mac, it's control command space. If it's if you're on a PC, you might have to look that up. But so I hold down the control button, I hold down the command button and I hold down the space button. And then in here emojis, you'll have to look for hands and then look for the one that has the two crossed hands and then drag it in there. And then you're going to do, and you can just do like day one. If you want to describe what your engage activity is, you can, um, or you can just even just leave it as engage. It doesn't really matter. So then I'm going to push add item. Now within this, everything is unpublished. So what I would want to do is publish both of these, even though this one has nothing in it. If they are, if any of these are unpublished, it means your students cannot see them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to engage. I'm going to come over to the right hand side and I'm going to go to edit. Now when I go to edit, this is my rich content editor. This is the old rich content editor. I'm going to show you what I would like you to do just because it's going to make things so much smoother for you. You come down to settings. Come over to feature options. And then where it says RCE enhancements, I would suggest turning that on. So now I'm going to come back to my modules and I'm going to show you the difference here. Go in and edit. Now you see how this looks different, this rich content editor. And the reason why I'm going to have you switch it is because with this one, you can do drop, drop and drag, which is pretty nice. Okay. So now, on the left hand side, this is kind of your text editor pieces where you can change your font and change your paragraph style, change what your font looks like. If you want a subscript, your alignment, you can do bullets, paragraph indentation. If you want to go from the other direction, directionality, you can do external links and course links in here. So if you want to link to another page or something outside of Canvas, you can. Here's where you upload images. Here's where you can upload and record media. Here's where you can add some documents. This is if you want to clear your formatting. If you want to add tables, if you're going to add any math formulas, and then here are your plugins too. So if I click on my plugins, you can kind of see like my Google Drive is in here. Um, but there's that's where I do like my studio videos. I do it that way too. Okay. So now that I'm in here, for example, let's say I want to use like a Google slide 
um, piece for my engagement. Okay, so now if I go into my plugin and I go down to Google, take me here. I'm gonna do my good things. And then I can embed it. And there's my good things. Now I have this as a page. There is no interaction on this. So I would not use this one for a page. I would want to use this one for a discussion. What I'd want to use a page for would be if I was going to do like Flipgrid and, in, and put those in. So I'm going to go into my Flipgrid. I'm going to go to another page here. So for example, our Flipgrid that we used here. So for example, when we did our good things for this one, I've created these, I've already made them. What I would do is I'd go to share and then this is my embed code right here. If I click on this embed code, it doesn't really look like it does anything, but what I did is I, it's already copied. And then I'm gonna come back to my demo. Now, if I would do this, that's what it's gonna look like in my page if I went and published it. That's what you would see. So instead of doing that, you're gonna come down to this HTML editor down here. And the way you're gonna know you're in it is all those formatting options are now gone. And if I push the V, Control V or Command V, and then I push Save, that is now in there. And I can go back and I can edit and I can add stuff to it. So if I wanna add something beforehand, I can add information ahead of it and things like that. So that is how I would use more the page piece if I'm going to add like a Padlet or a Flipgrid, you'd wanna use page. If I wanted to use like I showed you the other one, instead of doing a, an assignment or a page here, I would go to plus and I would do a discussion. Same thing, control command space bar. I'm gonna do my hands. Here, if I can find my handshake, there we go. I'm just name. So I named it Engage Discussion. And now if I go in here, I will go into Edit. And now I can now add my like my good things one. So I'm gonna come over to my plugins. I'm gonna go to my Google. So if I do my good things here, embed it, and there it is. Now, then down here, what you would do is you would allow threaded replies. So that's gonna reply, let people reply to each other. You can decide if you want your students to have to post before they respond or see other people's replies, you can decide that. You can decide if you want it graded. So I do four, three, two, one. If not, I can just do it's like complete or incomplete letter grade, GPA, or percentage. You probably do not need to re require peer reviews here. And then assignments, and you can decide a due date. So when you're ready, then you can go to save and publish. And there it is, and now you'd see that reply section. Once you are done with your Engage activity that you have built, I want you to reach out to your accountability partner and ask them to look things over. And do that before you submit it to Canvas. So then they can give you feedback. Can they access everything? Can they give you feedback of things that you can improve upon or do all the directions clear? Can they complete it as a student? So then as an accountability partner, go ahead and go through it. You don't have to actually like, if you have to create something or develop an About Me activity or something like that, you don't have to fully do that, but just make sure that you have access to be able to do that. So give each other feedback. And then once they have given you that feedback, make any corrections and then submit it to Canvas. Please do that for, for as an accountability partner um, on both ends. So give feedback and then also receive feedback and take that to heart. Um, again, if you have any other questions, please let me know.